Hi, Bob Guinea, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So here is the pestle and mortar that we used for the previous uh, tests for the uh, Nova reactor. And uh, there's still some residual uh, ground up uh, spectrographic uh, uh, graphite in here. Um, now this is extremely pure carbon and uh, from graphite and uh, we didn't see anything with this and that's in my opinion not a surprise. Uh, we did see uh, kind of expected results you would get when we used charcoal and I believe that that is uh, in part to do with the uh, carbon 14 content and the potassium 40 content. And so I'm going to crush some of this up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some sample off to a radiocarbon dating lab in Prague and I am going to use some in the uh, supernova reactor uh, which I'm going to be conducting by myself uh, to make sure there's uh, no um, challenges uh, to that initially uh, and uh, some processed uh, uh, charcoal uh, will then be sent off after it's been through the supernova reactor to test for the age of it and uh, presumably this fresh lumpwood charcoal should be uh, registered as very recent and uh, if the charcoal then registers or the, ca the carbon that comes from it the ca uh, registers as may maybe a thousand years old or ten thousand years old or a hundred thousand years old then uh, we will have taken the carbon 14 and made it into nitrogen 14 and uh, therefore we will have accelerated the aging of the carbon and I believe that the uh, potassium also will play a role that's in uh, carbon because of the potassium 40 isotope and those two together make carbon a really interesting thing to add to your uh, Lena experiments and this is why I suggested to the people, uh, the researchers at Sochi to add uh, carbon, not from graphite, but uh, from charcoal to their experiments. Um, and this is the full reason. Uh, one reason was because obviously it was in the um, uh, lion reactor in the form of diamonds, but that was just the carbon. That may have been pure carbon. I don't know where that carbon is sourced from. Um, but in this case, I believe there's something quite special about uh, carbon that's come from living trees. So I've done a quick wash off uh, with some water and uh, I'm going to now use some isopropyl alcohol to try and get it uh, both uh, clean and uh, cleaner and drier. Well here is the rough ground uh, charcoal and I have to say that was so much easier to get to this stage than it was with the spectrographic carbon. Uh, the spectrographic graphite uh, rods, they were absolutely hell to grind up. Um, but I think this is probably enough for our needs for the experiment, uh, the Omar experiment, uh, and uh, for the um, supernova experiments. And I am going to now sieve this uh, to get some fine uh, grain powder out of this. So the sieved carbon is lovely and fine and uh, we are going to put that into our little vessel here and you can see I've used an allen key here to remove the uh, grub screw which has got some PTFE tape on it and there you can see uh, the entrance, the tapped entrance to the cylinder. Now there's another grub screw at the other end of course uh, and we are going to uh, put the spare material into this sample jar uh, and that will go off for analysis and also well part of that will go off for analysis and some of it will be used in the supernova reactor. And uh, here we have uh, the uh, Loctite epoxy with the mixing uh, pipette and that will be used uh, to put a blob over each of the ends of this 
uh, uh, when it's all done, but I am not going to travel with it sealed. I'm going to take this separately and uh, I'm going to take this uh, such that it's not sealed with the Allen key. And if they want me to open it up and have a lick of the carbon, I will have to. So I'm going to have to take some uh, spare of the carbon in case they want me to pour it out uh, and so forth. So uh, that is uh, what we're going to do now. And uh, uh, leave it not completely done until uh, we get to the target destination. So uh, with the light on you can see the uh, charcoal packed in there and uh, that worked out pretty well uh, by using uh, this uh, larger allen key here and that was quite effective to pack that in there and hopefully that's not too high up and we can get the grub screw back in. Well, the procedure appears to have gone very well and uh, it went, the grub screw went back in very nicely. So we have our little sealed reaction vessel. And essentially what I'm saying, and the reason I'm suggesting using a metal container is that Evos, if they were electrical, would not essentially be able to go through this or electric fields would not be able to go through this and so forth. But if we had a string vortex soliton and or neutrino flux, uh, string vortex soliton potentially is a type of EVO or part of the EVO life cycle that is condensed form of neutrinos or contains a large amount of neutrinos but is essentially neutral. The idea is that it will go inside here and um, this uh, carbon-14 will change to nitrogen-14 and in theory, this will make this uh, carbon older when it goes for radiocarbon dating. And unlike previous tests, uh, these tests in these cylinders uh, shouldn't be able to be accused of having the radioactive material uh, spread around in the environment like was uh, the challenge uh, against the original Browns gas testing in, I think, 1991. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack the ends of these uh, when I get to the target destination uh, with some uh, tissue paper, uh, which I can be removing with a needle, uh, winkle picking style. And then I will use the uh, two-part epoxy here and uh, put a seal over the end uh, of the two uh, with the two-part epoxy to seal both ends of both of these uh, little uh, test vessels. So thank you very much to Alan Goldwater for fashioning these for me. Uh, he uh, did a wonderful job and I will repeat the process now with the uh, potassium carbonate. Well that similarly went in rather easy but I have to say this is probably the dodgy of the two, the one that looks the most dodgy. Uh, anyway, there's the potassium carbonate, and we've just put some in there and uh, crushed it up. So let's hope I don't have to eat that because that's uh, not good for you. So we have our sample in our uh, vessel, uh, ready to be sealed with some epoxy Loctite, and we have some backup here in case uh, we have to empty this out uh, en route. And also we have a whole bunch of stuff uh, sealed away in this sample, con of the, the, the sample container uh, for sending off to the carbon dating laboratory and also for other experiments. And there's four here uh, samples uh, for use in supernova uh, experiments.